So you probably have seen this funny video, the ultimate designer versus developer meme. And if you haven't seen it, I don't know, I guess you are living a, a healthy life without social media. Anyway, the link is below. So I decided to create this in Webflow and share it with you how I did so. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you like the skeleton of this animation and how you create this button, this toggle to be more exact. And um, then we'll get into the details of how I did everything with div blocks and not using any SVGs. And at the very end, I'll show you like a nice trick how to make it responsive just like this. By changing the font size, I can basically scale the entire button and everything. Uh, so it's fully responsible. All right, let's get started. So we start with the basics and we just add a new section here right below uh, what we have. I want to start really simple and show you how you can create like a simple sized version of this animation. So we call this section, the class um, that I already have. It just adds some space and the background color and centers everything. And um, then we can just add a div block and we can call this our, this can be our um, toggle this can be toggle wrap and we can just directly create the toggle here. So let's say we give it a width of something like 200 pixels by like 80 pixels probably. And we can give it a background color. So in this case, it can be this, and then we can just give it a radius, maybe something like hundred pixels to make it really, to give it this uh, pill shape and to give it, to put this like the toggle button, I guess, uh, inside of it, we just need to add another div block inside it. So we do that by dragging another div block inside, we can give this the class of button, maybe not use the, the other classes I have. So I can give it the class of maybe something they haven't used. So just short for button. And then this is going to be, you know, that circle. So to create a circle, we can say something like 70 pixels by 70 pixels. And then we obviously need to adjust this correctly. So we can take the toggle wrap and then use flex, display flex, justify it to the left and then center. Now we have to give this button a background so we just see it better maybe something like this. And then for the radius, we can choose something like 100% to make sure to make sure it's a nice and um, it's circle. And here to the toggle wrap, we can give it a padding, just something like 10 pixels or actually five because we have 80 for the entire thing. So uh, the entire toggle wrap is 80 and this is like 70 pixels. So it leaves like five pixels for bottom and uh, top, and then obviously five pixels to the left. So now that we have this, we basically have the skeleton of this and we can go right away animated. So to do that, we just need to go to this interaction panel and we just make sure that we have the toggle wrap selected. And here we add an element trigger because we want to animate it when the element is clicked. So we choose mouse click. And here we have the first click and the second click. In the first click, we start an animation and we are not going to use the ones that I have created before. Instead, we are going to create a new timed animation and we can call this toggle click or toggle first click. All right, so here, what do we want to do? When we click on this, we want to move this over to this place. So we click the button, the yellow circle, and then we add an action because we want to perform an action here and move it. So we are going to choose move, and now we need to decide where this button, this circle should be, when the page load is at the start of the animation, or I guess before the animation starts and it's called initial state. So we want to set an initial state here for this. We can just say 
for example, zero pixels is where we want to be. And if I move it, you see it moves. So at the beginning, we want it to be zero pixels and we just set this as initial state by clicking that button. Now we can right click on this and duplicate it. Once we duplicate it, now we can move it to the place we want. So I guess it's like 120. So if we do the math, uh, correctly, it's just 120. That should be fine. And now if we uh, press play, you see that it animates from left to right. So that's the basics of the animation. You can obviously play with duration uh, and you can set an easing. You can also have a, like a custom easing, anything you want. And like if I set this to a higher number, you see the feelings of this animation obviously changes and I highly encourage you to play with these. Uh, if you are like a beginner, uh, you really need to nail this down to make your animations really like pop and be like expensive looking. All right, how do we do the second click? How do we turn it off again? So for that here on the second click, we can choose start an animation and now we can either create a new animation or we just take what we had the toggle first click and we can just duplicate it and then choose the duplication the duplicated version and here we can delete one of these and like set the animation to go back to the place it should be so i'm going to delete what we animated and the one that we set to initial i'm going to uncheck the initial state now we can just give it an animation, uh, a duration, and then maybe just a different ease. So we can't play this because we don't have it here. We could actually set an initial state of this place uh, to the right. So from there it goes back, but it's not needed because this is already the second click. On the first click, it went from here to this place. And then we don't obviously need to specify where it should be because it's already there. All right. So we have this and now we can preview. So we can preview from here. And if I click, the animation starts and then the second click brings it back to the original place. All right. So this was like moving the toggle, the button. Uh, how do we do the background change? For example, just to show you that here, you can also choose background color, but we don't want to do it on the button. We wanted to do it on the toggle wrap because that's what we want to change. So we can do background color, BG color. We drag it and put it next to the button move. And here we can say the initial state is this color, for example, and then just duplicate it, put it here, and we can say it can change to this or whatever. And then when we play the animation, you see that it changes. Obviously, we need to also change that back. So here we can have the toggle wrap again, and then background color, set it next to it, and then change it to the color that it initially was. So if we preview, first click, it animates it and then it animates it back. Obviously the easing and everything is uh, pretty off. It's not optimum, uh, but I just want to show you the concept of this animation. All right, so now we have the concept. How do we add all these details and how are these details are done basically? So back to the main button and let's talk about the details and how some of these are made. So the best way of understanding these, I would highly recommend you to clone the project and just play around with everything, including the shadows, especially the shadows, because those are the detail, like the exact details that make this so nice um, to play with those. But I'll try just to explain some concepts. For example, you see here we have a class called button shadow. And this if I set it to display none, you see it removes the shadows. This is like a div block on everything, like on top of everything, just adding some shadows here. You see we have multiple layers. The reason for that is these are with different intensity and different uh, colors to basically create more depth and not look so cheap. So yeah, it's just giving more 
uh, depth to it and bring it, popping it uh, a bit more. Anyway, so let's go to the Sun Moon div and here we have this Sun Moon wrap. And this wrap is, you see it's set to 1.8M height and width. We'll get into why it's set to M in a second. But just, you know, this is like the uh, cube we have here and then we have the sun, so th the square. It's the same size and then we have the moon. It's basically also the same size. It has this craters, of course, uh, on it. We don't see it because we don't see the moon entirely because I put everything inside the div block here and set it to overflow hidden. So you can set it to overflow visible again. You see them next to each other and this is how the animation is done. So if I have it like this, you see when we animate it, um, the entire div shifts to the right and the moon comes on top of the sun. That's basically how it's working. So let's set that back to overflow none. Um, that's how the in the original video was. That's why I made it also like this. So let's look at the clouds. The clouds are just simple div blocks set to position absolute. And that's basically it. That's that simple. Then we have the second layer of the clouds, which is obviously just a copy of the first layer with combo classes. And I'm just changing the opacity a little bit. So it's again, giving more depth. Um, then we have the stars and that's where I made my life pretty difficult. I tried to create this and I succeeded to uh, create these with div blocks only and not use any SVG. Obviously, uh, the right way of doing this would be using SVGs. There is no reason to, no good reason to create these with div blocks, but just because I wanted it to be 100% uh, made in Webflow, I did it so. So um, you see I have them on a scale, so I'm going to change the scale so you see it uh, a bit more clearer. So any of these stars are in a star base wrapper. This is basically the wrapper. So every one of these stars uh, is made out of the star base, which is also the wrapper, but the star base is this square div block that is uh, rotated 45 degrees, right? And then the edges of the star, they are made using border. How you do this is basically you set one side of the border to a color and then the neighbor edges to transparent and give them a size. So they push against each other and they make kind of this triangular shape. Right, so that's how you create triangles with div blocks. Just try it; it's a lot of fun, um, or I guess that's the definition of fun for me. Uh, anyway, so you create these like that. So I'm going to just set that. I'm going to set it back to the uh, size it was, and that's how the stars are made. Uh, you obviously create one of them, and then you just create duplications and set uh, a combo class to give them a different size. So each combo class has just a different scale and nothing else. All right, so these are the stars. And now let's have a look at uh, the animation. So for the animation, we have a mouse hover. Let's have a look at that because it's much simpler. So on hover in, you already know the concept. We have these hollows around the sun and also the moon. So these low opacity div blocks essentially. So I'm just changing their size from what it is to be a little bit bigger on hover. So you see it just ever so slightly that they change size. I wanted to create this to give it a, again a bit more flair. That's the simple part. So let's go back and now on the mouse click, that's where the detailed animation is happening. So we have the toggle to night. And in Toggle Tonight, just as we did with the simple animation, here we have a list of things set to initial state. And then from that initial state, we are just basically moving things around. So in the initial state, for example, here, we see the stars, right? But when we go to preview, we don't see them. Why? Because we set them to be up here in the initial state. 
and when we click we just bring them down so this is all what is happening we are just moving the stars down and then we are doing the same thing with the clouds uh, with some stars i'm just giving them a little bit of individual move to create a bit of parallax so parallax is when objects move with different speeds this creates a sense of depth because when you look out of window uh, from a you know moving car you see that parallax effect and that's basically the same idea here so we do this uh, for the stars and also for the clouds and yeah uh, we bring the move over as you saw earlier and that's basically it and the background color change on the second click it's the same thing happening again uh, what i did here i really took time to make everything like custom so not not every individual one is custom but i try to basically play around with the easing and create a feeling that felt right and this is very difficult to convey through words this is something that you need to look at a lot of i guess award-winning designs and then try to replicate them with easing and different animation durations so that basically was the animation now let's quickly look at the the way that i made the entire thing so responsive so you see here on the main wrap i can change the font size and every object inside um you know scales up and down and it's not exactly like doing it by you know transform and scale it this is a bit different and I'm doing this and this is much easier to maintain and change I'm doing that by using M so I'm using M to set every size except for the shadows which I should have but I just got I was lazy to go in and change everything again but yeah so you use M and the way it works M gets multiplied by its parent font size so when we change the pa parent font size here we basically multiply this number by the m's and that's how it works so instead of saying something is like 600 pixels we say 6 m's and then it gets multiplied by 100 uh, pixels and then it's the same as 600 pixels it's that simple so if i say instead of 6 m if i say 600 pixels the size doesn't change because the the parent font size is 100 so it's the same thing but this way using m it makes it much easier to control the entire thing just using the typography setting of the parent obviously this is like a deep different topic if you want to get into it i'll link some videos below to watch i have some videos there are also some really great other videos to learn uh, this from but since this was an educational piece it's not about like accessibility in this specific case i wanted just to show you how to do it so ha scaling things in this way was a really fun way of doing it anyway it was a long one um, and i've been gone from youtube for quite a while you probably have not noticed but anyway i'm back and i will be making more videos so um, first of all thank you for watching and if you have any suggestion uh, anything you want me to touch on and you know um, teach you on uh, just let me know in the comments below until the next one have a good one bye bye